At the beginning of the film, we see a lovely house, but everything is in disarray. A lot of broken objects and general disorder suggest that this area has recently been the scene of a fight. Afterwards, we find ourselves in the house's swimming pool, where a lifeless body floats amidst a crimson mess of blood. After that, we flash back in time a few days to find a girl lounging on the couch in the very same house. The property owner is this girl, and her name is Catherine. Despite her best efforts, she has not been able to break into the acting industry. Unlike her, her husband Richard is a successful actor, and they live in this house together. In their home, we observe a gardener who is tasked with tending to the various plants and pool areas. Because he is well known in his industry and has been instrumental in Catherine's rise to stardom in the entertainment industry, her husband is a man with a full schedule. At the moment, he is frequently assigning her roles to perform. Following the completion of her screenplay, Catherine emails it to a producer. As Catherine steps out into the garden, she notices that her gardener isn't there. The next thing she knows, her phone rings. While Catherine is still on the phone, the man on the other end informs her that their former gardener has decided to quit, so they will be sending a replacement the following day. A young man named Ben answers the door and introduces himself as a gardener when she goes to see who's at the other side. He assures her that he will be working from now on, explaining that he is simply visiting the garden for the day and will begin working the following day. As a gardener for them, Catherine also gives him detailed instructions. Plus, it's weird that the door is locked just as she's about to go back inside. After Ben notices that she is unable to enter the house, he offers to help her by picking the lock. However, he assures her that contacting the authorities is not the way to proceed. Despite her slight unease, she agrees to his offer and politely requests that he open the door for her. He picks the lock with a pen. As Catherine watches her old lock being picked so easily from inside the house, she experiences a strange sensation. Asking if he knows her former gardener, she continues. Ben proceeds to ask her why she is unaware of him, mentioning that he was recently arrested. After saying this, Ben leaves, leaving Catherine to wonder why her gardener was arrested. Richard enters the picture afterwards. Richard clearly leads a very full life. He is unable to devote much time to his wife due to his numerous concurrent assignments. He is constantly interacting with co-workers and she stays at home, trying to think of new ways to succeed professionally, just like her husband. Catherine mentions to her husband over dinner that night that she has written a screenplay and requests that he read it aloud to her. She continues by inquiring about her chances of landing a part in the upcoming stage adaptation of her script. After they finish eating, Richard begins reading the script, however, he gets a call which interrupts his reading, and he ends up falling asleep again before he can complete it. Catherine is understandably upset when he goes to work the following morning without completing the script. Ben appears after he has departed. Seeing him work makes Catherine extremely bored. He accepts her invitation to join her for a drink. After that, they have some lemonade and she expresses her gratitude by telling him she simply wanted to say thanks. She mentions that he helped her with the door yesterday when he asks her what she is thanking him for. For that, she is eternally thankful. After some time of conversation, Ben finally tells her that she was under no obligation to make him drinks. However, she claims that her intention was to do him a favor. Ben then reveals to her that he is a singer as they begin to develop a relationship. As soon as she tells him to sing for her, he stands up and begins to sing. He begins to work as soon as she returns inside, having impressed her greatly with his singing. Now Catherine begins to commit her script to memory. Ben was. Is now naked as Catherine observes him. Within the house, she summons him and asks if he can assist her with anything else. Whatever she asks of him, he does his best to assist her. She then sits down across from him at the table and asks if he would be open to hearing her script read aloud. She then tries to compensate Ben monetarily for his troubles after he listens to her script and treats her really kindly. But she insults him, and he tells her he's going. He tells Catherine that he did not like being paid for those menial tasks and that it made him feel really insignificant and useless. 
Catherine then proceeds to apologize to him for doing so. Later that night, as Richard returns home, Catherine attempts to entice him to share her bed. Despite her best efforts, her husband refuses to give in to her advances, insisting that he is too busy getting ready for a party. He then informs her that she, too, must prepare herself, because they will soon be travelling. Even though Catherine is furious about it, she must listen to her husband, who is considerably more successful and wealthy. While everyone is chatting over dinner, she gets ready and they head out to the party. Catherine is obviously unhappy to be there. She is extremely bored because no one ever talks to her. She finds out about the large, empty house next to hers the following morning while she is at home. She felt uneasy because this house had been making a lot of noise earlier in the day. After that, Catherine attempts to inquire as to the situation. Yet, nobody seems to care. At the same time, Ben arrives. Catherine complains to Ben about how the neighboring house's music is too loud and is making her sleepless. Ben assures her that he will handle the situation. When Ben realizes no one is home, he begins to yell out to them. Oates is the name of the man who appears on the balcony. Additionally, Ben informs the man to lower the volume as they are becoming increasingly agitated. After that, Ben proceeds to inform Catherine. He learned about him because Oates moved into the house not long ago and asked for his help. Catherine informs him that she would like to meet her new neighbor as well, and that he should extend an invitation to her home. After Ben gives her some oats, she asks him what he needs to move in, and he says he moved in yesterday. In an effort to make him feel at home, Catherine heads to the kitchen to whip up some burgers for oats. Additionally, something strange occurs as Ben continues to trail her around the kitchen. Ben proceeds to ask her some strange questions, such as whether she loves her husband deeply. Catherine dismisses the question as foolish, as she loves her husband more than anything in the world. Ben continues by inquiring about Richard's happiness, which is both an insensitive and incredibly personal question. He clearly intends to turn her against her husband by poisoning her mind. Oates enters the house in the subsequent scene, where he drinks, while Ben plays music and Catherine dances with him. Oates finds it quite disturbing that Ben is a gardener, and he feels the same way whenever he watches the two of them dance. They wind up drawing nearer still. Oates watches them kiss with a shocked expression as they start making out. As Catherine turns away in embarrassment over what she did, Ben notices that Oates is still there. After Ben approaches Oates and has a word with him, Oates promptly departs. They pick up where they left off dancing when Ben returns to Catherine. Now these two begin to imbibe. It appears as though Ben is intentionally trying to get her drunk because he keeps pouring her drink after drink. Catherine continues by saying that she has to go get her husband and that she is already very drunk. Therefore, she ought to abstain from alcohol at this time. Also, she mentions that she won't be able to drive after consuming even a small amount of alcohol. As soon as she sets her glass down, the action jumps back to two days ago. We get to meet Oates and Ben. It has just come to light that these two are actually acquainted. They. Next, they break into a garage and use threats to get the owner to part with some necessary items. Some of the man's food that wasn't necessary was even taken from him. Now we know this man isn't a gardener at all. At this point, it becomes clear that these two are, in fact, criminals. They steal from humans. This is simply their current way of life. They happen to be sitting close to the garage when they spot a girl going by. It is Catherine herself who is this girl. She walks past them, and they both stare at her. As far as Ben is concerned, she is looking stunning. Ben continues by warning his companion that this individual will be their next target. They make up their minds that they will track Catherine to her house. They see a guy driving around without a roof and decide to hop in. The guy orders them out of his vehicle. The man is threatened by Oates, who proceeds to brandish his knife. Unless he follows Catherine's car, they threaten to stab him to death, they say. When she finally stops and enters the house, which happens to be yours, they continue to follow her for quite some time. 
They remain hidden in her garden, observing the unfolding events. They observe her as she sits by the poolside as her long-gone gardener tends to the plants. After Ben informs the authorities that a man is violently trespassing on his property, she proceeds to call the police from her house. Claiming it is his house, he gives them Catherine's address. This man is attempting to rape his daughter, he adds. At this point, the two of them realize that the house adjacent to Catherine's is rather large. Plus, no one is presently residing there either. As a result, Ben unlocks the front door and they go inside to await the arrival of the authorities. They can be seen standing by the window, observing Catherine's every move. The cops show up at Catherine's house, where they mistake the gardener for a trespasser and arrest him. At this point, Ben instructs Oded to contact Catherine immediately and inform her that a replacement gardener will be sent to her the following day. We also saw this call at the beginning of the movie. It has now come to light that these two were the ones who planned it all. On the other hand, they were completely unaware that someone else was also watching them. Eventually approaches Ben and asks, why are we waiting? Why don't they break into her home, loot it for all it's worth, and then leave? Due to the fact that the woman is never alone in her home, it will be easy. According to Ben, the cops would have apprehended them if they did that. They may also be apprehended while they are doing it. He thinks this heist requires careful preparation. Ben, it turns out, was the one who went to see Catherine and turned on the loud music. The scene shifts to show Oates observing Catherine and Ben as they dance. Afterwards, Ben visits Oates, who questions Ben's lack of theft. She should be pillaged and then they should run. However, according to Ben, their intention is not to plunder her. He informs them that he is now going to have Catherine and that all he ever wanted was her. After that, he orders Oates to leave. Here we are, back in the here and now. Ben escorts Catherine to a private room. Once they're in bed together, he climbs on top of Catherine, who is visibly intoxicated. He informs her that everything Oates said was false and that he has been residing in the house next to her. But Catherine isn't sober enough to comprehend her procedure anything at all. After that, Ben rescued her and brought her back to their home. He then orders Oates to murder her without touching her. Even though he tries, Oates is unable to bring himself to murder her. After that, Oates warns her against informing Ben that he failed in his attempt to murder her. Richard, meanwhile, is patiently waiting for Catherine at the airport. Ben becomes enraged and murders Oates after learning that Oates was innocent of killing Catherine. After that, he continues to pursue Catherine. Ben and Richard get into an argument, and her husband shows up right when she's about to be caught. Ben is on the verge of murdering Richard. As soon as Catherine kills him with a gunshot, the scene returns to its opening. A few days later, the scene shifts to reveal that Catherine has also received her major break and is cruising towards success. There it is, the film concludes. I appreciate you tuning in. If you would like to receive updates on new motion picture recaps, please subscribe and hit the bell icon.